Hey guys, so in this video I'm gonna be discussing Superman and Lois 205 Girl, you're gonna be a girl, you'll be a woman soon. It's how the episode. Um gonna be reviewing it. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below this guy if you're new. And um, you yeah, know, let's get right into it. So the episode started off. We come back after two weeks or so away from the show during the Olympics that went off. Um the episode opened up with the flashback to Metropolis 1979, where um, this is a little bit after Ellie's, I'm assuming both her parents, but mainly her father was mentioned, um, where they died and her inheritance came in and it was some type of device or necklace or something that apparently killed her father or corrupted people or something. And Ellie decided to follow down that path, even though it was requested that she didn't. Um... And then following the end of 204, where Chrissy calls Allie and wants to learn more about what she knows about Lois, um, Allie says that she's going to show Chrissy everything. And that's where we learn what that is later in the episode. Then we go over to Clark, who is blaming himself for what happened to um, Irons. Again, 204, um, fighting Bizarro, Irons got quickly hurt. Um, and then Lois is blaming herself for Lucy, and Lois thinks Allie and Bizarro are somehow connected. Um, because with both of them, I mean, it just seems weird to Lois, so she thinks it's connected. Suming goes to check on Tag after Bizarro's attack. He was the only one of the three super kids that lived. The other two died by Bizarro's hand, and Clark's blaming himself for that as well. Um... Sam came to the farm to train Jordan, which is what Jordan asked him to do at the end of 204, towards the end of 204, and wants Jonathan to help um, try to push John Jordan to do better. Chrissy doesn't trust Lois anymore. Big surprise. I mean, could you really blame her? I don't think any of us... If we were in Chrissy's position and Lois was nonstop lying about details, not telling you the full truth, I would... Honestly, side with Chrissy on this, I mean, I wouldn't trust Lois. I mean, pfft. she literally lied about details for their own story for, for their own company. I mean, that's, I don't know, or their own news thing. I mean, that's not the best look, you know. Um, she mentioned Morgan Edge and how she wasn't fully open about that and then brought Lucy back in and Allie, basically saying that Lois wasn't really open with those stories either. Obviously, since she, they moved to Smallville, she hasn't been honest. Or at least 100%. Bizarro's after Dr. Faulkner. Um, one of the people going to Allie's meetings, a.k.a. also one of the people um, who has brought Bizarro out of the mine. I guess we know that she's helping them now. Um, or at least led to Bizarro getting out. Clark goes to see General Anderson, and Anderson blames Clark. And he asks for the pendant that Bizarro had that... Tag got away with, which actually was a good thing, but Anderson thinks Superman is using that dependent to power himself, to make him way more powerful because it's seen them power up. Bizarro, obviously, he doesn't understand anything because he's a douchebag, and yeah. <laughs> I don't like Anderson. I mean, he's a, a the character Anderson is a douche. The actor who plays him is doing it really well, unless he's a douche in real life. He's not, I'm kidding. The actor is a good guy in real life, but. Um, from what I hear, but <laughs> just go all on. I don't know. I, I think Anderson's a good character for the show for Clark, but he's just a douche. <laughs> I mean, there's no other word. I could say a lot of words about it, but I, I, I'm trying to keep it PG here. Um, <laughs> so Anderson doesn't trust Superman anymore because he thinks that thing that killed two of the three soldiers was Superman. Obviously, he doesn't trust him anymore. Because of that, so he said if he brings in Bizarro, he he said the phrase other oh, Superman, he doesn't know what it actually is called, he will give the pendant to Clark, which would basically be pointless, but at that point, if he's already brought him in. Jonathan and Jordan were training with Sam, and it seemed like Jonathan was jealous of Jordan in a way, and Jonathan decided to take the drug to make him have superpowers. Um... Lois went to go check out the mines and thinks it's somehow connected to Allie, which it ended up was true. 
Then we go to Allie and Chrissy, and Allie believes the ascension that she is spreading to her followers was sent to her by choice, like she was chosen to do so by destiny or fate or whatever. Um, and then Chrissy drugged Allie. Or, sorry, Allie drugged Chrissy, I worded that wrong. Allie drugged Chrissy, and then we go back to Lois and with the mines and Dr. F um, Faulkner um, killed by Bizarro in the office, but Bizarro didn't attack Lois. Which is weird, and I think the best thing we can say is one of two things. Either A, Bizarro feels the feelings that Clark has for Lois, or B, like Clark said in the episode, Bizarro has a Lois in his world. A version of Lois that either A, he's married to, or B, cares so much about like Clark cares for Lois, but they're different people in a way. That might be their one similarity. I don't know. Who knows? Um... I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Um, we find out obviously Bizarro killed the doctor. Lois calls Clark to bring him into it. And like I said, Clark thinks that Bizarro's married to some version of Lois on his world, wherever the hell he came from. Um, Ellie showed Chris the truth about the ascension that corrupted their mind. Um, Jonathan took the drug to make him stronger. Jonathan name dropped Superboy when talking to Jordan, like Jordan Superboy. It was obviously just, you know, him saying it, but it was a name drop teasing Superboy like Jordan or Jonathan would become that. Spoiler alert, we know which one's going to become that, and it's not the one we all think it is. Um, there's a set photo showing Jonathan um, as Superboy. I was going to do a video over it, but I decided not to. But that's going to be interesting to see, <laughs> or two Superboys, who knows. Um, which, you know... And then Jonathan wanted to spar with Jordan. I remember at this point in time, Jonathan took the drugs, so he has superpowers, he has super strength, all that. Jo Jordan doesn't know that. Um, then he goes to the Cushing family, and Sophie finally shows up again. I swear to God, it's like um, Joe and Cecile's daughter, whatever her name is. We haven't seen her since season four. I mean, they bring her in for like five seconds, and then she's gone. <laughs> we didn't see her at the Quinceanera. We didn't see anywhere else at the episode besides five seconds. In the, the middle part of the episode. So, good job. <laughs> Assuming on Lois. I mean, that's the one bad thing you guys do. Is you write off characters for... You show them for five seconds and that's it. I mean... I don't... It's not that... I don't know why they're not showing her. You would think, considering that she's Sarah's sister... That they would do something with Sarah. Considering she's one of the main leads of the show. Next to Clark, Lois, and... Um, Jordan and Jonathan, I mean, she's pretty connected to the main story. In some way, she'll perform. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Just bring in the Cushing family, but whatever. Chrissy said she was like in a, like a bizarro version of herself. And she specifically said bizarro, which obviously connects Allie to bizarro in some way, she'll perform. But it's not just Superman. It's everyone. This whole world is corrupted by opposite versions of themselves, and Allie is the one controlling it. She is the leader of that world where everything is opposite. If you're a good person, you're a bad person. If you save lives, you're killing lives. If you're the smartest person in the world, you're the dumbest in that world. I mean, it's the exact opposite. Like with Clark, he's a hero in this world, but Bizarro, he's literally a villain in his own world, more than likely. Like with his freeze breath, with Clark, Bizarro has fire breath and freeze vision, and Clark has laser vision. So, I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying, but instead of, like, Clark with superpowers, it's if you're good, you're bad, if you're smart, you're dumb, if, you know, in the exact opposite, just coursing through everyone in that Bizarro world that Chrissy mentioned. And, um, Chrissy said it felt like something was off. Like, it wasn't which, bizarro, obviously. <laughs> it's always off. Um, and as they, Suman and Lois realize that Allie's gonna be next, because that's where Bizarro went to go talk to Dr. Faulkner about. And so Suman and goes there, Suman and Lois go there, and um, there's a really good scene where Suman, like, slows down time a little bit, growing, moving at super speed, Uses his super hearing, hears Bizarro flying in, moves Allie out of the way, and then 
they go fight Bizarro and Superman. Um, and you can kind of tell that Allie knew what was going on, but she didn't want to believe it. Like, I don't think she understood what she unleashed. And that, in a way, like, you could kind of, it was kind of hard to tell. It was like she knew what it was, but at the same time, it was like she had no idea that would what be what would come out. She probably didn't know it would be an evil version of Superman that could very well destroy the world. And, you know, we end up finding why he's here at the end of the episode, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, Bizarro tells Clark, and they're out of the city by now. They're somewhere in a warehouse or whatever, far away. And Bizarro tells Clark to get out of the way. To stay away, you know, let Bizarro do what he's here to do, whatever the hell that is. Um, and Clark, you can tell Clark is now holding back, like with General, or General Zod, like, if, well, he kind of is that. With Morgan Edge last season, I mean, we saw Clark really not hold back, because these aren't human beings. This isn't like if it was Lex Luthor, I mean, Clark would hold back against that. But this is an evil version of Clark. Clark knows that if he doesn't hold back, he's gonna die, so he has to use his full strength, and, you know, if they were going to do a pun in there, I mean, probably the first time in a long time since Clark's been able to do that. So, it would have been funny if they put a line in there about that. But Because I know some version of Superman said that. Not in the Arrowverse. I remember some Superman saying he never gets a, like, he always has to hold back. I think it was finding Darkseid. And he said that Clark's not going to handle it, so he's not going to hold back. I think it was the cartoon, the... Justice League Unlimited anime series, that's Superman, I'm pretty sure it was, but it was hilarious as hell, but it was also really good, um, so I, they should connect that in some way, <laughs> um, like I said, Bizarro used his freeze breath and, f um, his fire breath, sorry, not freeze breath, fire breath and freeze vision, and Bizarro mentioned again that he wants to kill Superman, and then Clark realizes that Bizarro is the exact opposite of him, the powers are the opposite, everything's opposite, um, and then Clark flew himself and Bizarro into a cave full of, now, I went on Twitter, people were saying it was right kryptonite, I thought it was X kryptonite that we got last season, there was just a whole cave of it, it didn't look right to me, so I'm gonna say X kryptonite, but if you know if it was right kryptonite, let me know in the comments down below, but I don't think it was right kryptonite, I think it was X kryptonite, but for whatever reason that worked on Bizarro and not Clark, which I think we clarified Clark's immune to that. He's only immune to regular kryptonite, not X kryptonite. But yeah, but it was enough to weaken Bizarro, and he Clark managed to knock out Bizarro. And then we go to the Kinsinier with Clark, Lois, Jordan, and Jonathan showing up to the party with Sarah. Um, Jonathan thinks Jordan is selfish, and then he thinks that he's better than Jordan. Um, and that Jor Jonathan thinks he's better than Jordan. Um, obviously he's just being as selfish, you know what, um, as always, um, well not always, but recently since he took that drug, you can tell he's kind of like that now. Um, Sarah and Jordan have a real conversation about her depression, and Jordan kind of connecting on that on some level. Um, Tanya, who had an affair, or Kyle had an affair with Tanya, we found that in 204, or 203 and 1 to 2. And apparently Tanya told her girlfriend about it because Kyle had a plan to leave um, Lana and Sarah um, to be with Tanya. And yeah, so that was something. <laughs> um, and apparently, I'm forgetting his name, but the current mayor of the city, uh, Smallville, he found out, Tanya told him, and he thought, Kyle thought that he was going to tell Lana, um, which he didn't. But Sarah overheard the conversation, so you can imagine how that went. Um, Chrissy tells Lois about the Bizarro experience, about how she was like an opposite version of herself. Everyone she knew was the exact opposite, and Lois kind of connected the dots, like she was connected to Bizarro. This weird Superman thing that's the exact opposite, Allie's connected some way, somehow, and she's bringing these people out, um, somehow. Sarah's mad at Kyle, and she told him that she knows about all of it, and tells Kyle to tell Lana, and I didn't really catch all of it, but it seemed like Lana knew about the girl from the bar, 
but didn't know that they were having an affair. Like, she was mainly pissed off that Kyle was, like, going to the bar, drinking again, or something, it seemed like. I don't think she knew there was an affair going on. It was just that she assumed he was drinking again. Like, they didn't mention the cheating. Sarah knows about it. She's just not saying anything to Lana. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what the point was. Unless Kyle cheated on Lana before, and... Lana found out, and she just moved past it. I mean, that's always a possibility, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, Clark is notified by his mother, the robotic version, that Bizarro is awake. He brought him to Morgan Edge's secret desert lair, and he goes to see him. His mother's watching him in a cage, and they were able to translate his voice, so whenever Bizarro talks, it sounds like a regular human being talking and not the exact opposite. <laughs> um, and we found out that Clark, that Bizarro is here to save his world and Clark's world. So something happens in Bizarro's world that he comes to our world, the Clark's world, or Earth Prime, and is trying to prevent whatever the hell is happening. Um, so who the hell knows what's going on there? Jonathan had laser vision when Jordan pissed him off. He showed it and Jordan got all excited that he has powers and it's manifesting. He doesn't know that's from the drug. Um, Jonathan didn't want to tell anyone about it. And he made up a story about how he has powers. He didn't mention the drug. He mentioned it as it's manifesting. Um, so again, he, everyone's in the dark. Bizarro said that a war is coming. And in order to save the world, Clark must lose everything according to Bizarro. And that they must kill her. Now I'm assuming the her in the position is Allie. Because, again, he had a chance to go after Lois. He didn't take it. So it wasn't Lois. I think the most obvious choice here is Allie. And somehow, some way, with Allie being connected to the Bizarro world, I think Allie's definitely going to be either A, dead, or B, in a really advanced prison by the end of the season. <laughs> Um, or who knows, sooner rather than later. I don't know how many episodes season has. I'm assuming 13, who knows. But, um, yeah, so that was the episode. It was a pretty good episode. I think it was a good one to come back with. I think, you know, I didn't really have anything thing to complain about. Besides that one thing about Sophie, which I always complain about. Because it's like, you have her in the show. If you didn't want her in the show, don't. You know, put her in the show. I mean, write her off. I mean, as simple as that. Don't have her in for five seconds of an episode and say, oh, she's not coming to the Kinsinieri or whatever. I mean, don't have her in at all then. <laughs> like, what's the point? Um, so, I don't know what's going on with Sophie there. But whatever the writers are doing or whatever, Todd helping this size, I mean, that's up to him. But, um, so, yeah. I got Superman Lois video more than likely releasing Thursday. Do you remember, for those who... Are keeping up to date with it. Avengers of the Arrowverse Episode 3. Arrow Season 3. My Arrowverse Podcast Series. Will be up tomorrow. Wednesday. At 9am. February 23rd. On the Arrow Avengers of the Arrowverse Podcast Channel. You can find that in the description down below. Or on my homepage. You can scroll down to future channels. And you will see that there. Go watch the episode. Again 9am Wednesday. New episode every Wednesday at 9 a.m. So go watch it. If you're new to this that series, go watch the other two episodes that are currently out now. If you're watching this a couple hours after, they're still out. But episode three will be out roughly 12 hours if you guys are seeing this. So go watch that. Thank you for the support. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Have a good night. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.